So he's gone from, a, you know, on average 4,000 a month about a year ago to now 7,000. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower. Yeah. As you guys know, eBay's up and down. Hey, what's going on everybody? Steve here at Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna share Vinny's story of how he went from, about a year ago you were doing, what was your, what was your, your 60 day total was what, like 12,000? No, 8,000. Yeah, 8,000. So you're doing around $4,000 a month. When I first introduced Vinny to you guys on the channel, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of the toy videos. He was doing about 4,000 a month. Yep. And now, eBay, they changed out their, their layout on the app. And these, do, do you mind if I share this? Go ahead. So now over the last 90 days, you can see his numbers for full transparency. So, so you know what we're talking about is true. Almost at 21,000. So you've scaled it to, uh, well, on average, about $7,000 a month from four. So you've almost doubled your sales Close. in a sense. Yeah. You've almost doubled your sales. So we want to talk about in this video exactly how did you double your sales? And he's selling mostly toys. Would you say, is it like all toys, 50% toys? I would say 90% are toys. Okay, I mean, so I have 600 listings. I think about 500 of them are. Interesting. So you're doing that much with only 600 listings. Yeah. That's pretty cool. How did you do that? Like, what's what, what did you do? What did you change? And uh, hopefully this could help the people who are, maybe they're just getting started and they want to fast track their results or they've been doing this for three, six, nine months or whatever and they want to double their sales, triple their sales. What exactly did you do? Was there a mindset shift? Was there certain actions you took? Well, the one thing I did was I took an extra day off of my full job, job. full-time job. Yeah. And I, I allocated an extra wait, day. Wait, wait, wait. So you're not even doing this full-time? No. That's cool. <laughs> four, day, four days a week, I'm, yeah. I'm eBay. Okay. So I had uh, three days a week. I bumped it up to four. That was my first step. So I got a, another like 30 listings in usually a week. Now I can, pu I can push a little 30 more. So I, I allocated more time to listing. More time to list more items. Exactly. I have the knowledge now, so I'm quicker in a thrift store. So when you go to a thrift store, you're able to find more and, and, and spend less time? Yeah, for example, like maybe a year and a half ago, I'd spend an hour at Savers and I wouldn't be able to go to another one because now it's seven, eight o'clock. Yeah. Now I can go to the Savers for a half hour, jump out and go to another Savers or a Goodwill and I can actually like double my chances by being a little quicker because I've learned more. Like I'm not sitting there on my phone the whole time. What is this? What is that? What is this? So. So that's another, I, I learned more. Sorry to cut you off, but there's a lot of people who, they all hear it on YouTube, learn more, educate yourself. What does that exactly mean? Does that mean going through a guide? Does that mean watching YouTube videos? Does that mean just spending money and losing money or gaining experience? Like, what does that mean? Like, how did you learn? For me, I learned by buying. I just dove head first into toys and I just buy and buy and buy. And every time I see something weird that I don't know, Instead of sit there and look it up, I just buy it. I'm at that point now where it's $3. I'm not going to sit there for 10 minutes trying to find it. I'm just going to buy it, Yeah. figure it out when I get to my warehouse. If it just doesn't sell, I won't pick it up again. Like That's the point I'm at right now It's just learning through the experience of buying. Would you recommend doing that if you're brand new and you only have $100 or $200 to start? No. I would, I would recommend studying some sold listings in toys. And... If you want to study listings, you, toys is such a broad category, so you got to break it down to specifics like type in dolls and go to like solds or highest price it's the same way with clothing there's so many different things don't just like study everything find jeans or find shirts go into it find a brand or maybe you can find disney or you can find i don't know mario or something and you start to really dive into that specific and learn it and everybody knows stuff that's valuable you know i, I think most people know like if you find a barbie from 1950 you probably make some money if yeah. you find a ninja turtle that first came out you probably make some money so most people do know that kind of stuff it's going to take a little more time to know the other things okay. so i would say start with the things that are familiar to you you know you see a bag of barbies yeah they're older you know something like that so let's get back to how you were able to double your sales so you took an extra day off from work to yeah. spend more time in your business so that's huge a lot of people they don't understand the correlation between what you put in is what you get out. 
right? A lot of people have that mindset that it's all luck and it's luck about what I find. It's luck about luck if something sells, which is true. Like sometimes you're going to find something that's worth 500 bucks and you're going to get lucky. But over the long haul, if you were to look over like a 6, 12, 18 month period, it's the time that you put in to going out sourcing, but especially the time that you put into listing. Yeah, the listing is important. Like sitting down and actually getting your listings up there is very important. Did you become any more uh, efficient in terms of your listing process? Because oh yeah, I come fast now. Yeah, Cause we're in the warehouse right now and I, I haven't been here in three months cause I've been in Miami and I'm like so impressed by how efficient they've become in terms of like just the various processes over here. So did you improve any of your processes? Yeah, I've I cut out a lot of time for um, shipping and listing. Um, I'm very good. I learned all the item specifics. I can go and bang through all the item specifics really quick. Where before it took me a little bit of time. Um, a lot of things I do know already, so I can make I my own. <laughs> I felt it coming. So I can make my own titles and, and stuff like that. I've streamlined a lot of diff small things in the listing process that I get quicker at. And another big thing is I went to savers an extra day. So I have, and and I went with my dad who's a senior, so I get a 30% oh, off on Tuesday. Go with your mom, go with your dad. So every Tuesday, I'd go to one savers with my dad. On Wednesdays, I'd go to another savers um, near where I am. Okay. And then around Friday, I would revisit that same savers that I went with my dad on senior day. Interesting. Because they don't usually put stuff out on those Mondays and Tuesdays. They put them out after the 30% because they don't want to give. Oh, I've noticed that. Sometimes so that I... extra day has helped me find a lot more stuff so in one shot. So you're saying when they have those big sale days, they'll hold back the good stuff? They'll hold the new stuff to put oh, out. The like new they're stuff. not going to be. Like on a Tuesday, you won't see them put out as much stuff as they do because on the other days. Because what's their goal of running it to kind of clear out the old stock in a sense? Exactly. Yep. That's what I think. What else do you think you did if you had to think about anything from like the sourcing, from the listing, to the shipping, maybe just overall general business practices? Was there anything else that you did that you can point your finger and you could say, this is why I went from 4000 a month to now $7,000 a month? And um, I started focusing on higher, higher mm -hmm. um, profit margins and high, spending more money to buy something to make more money. Okay. That's that's what I, I started looking at. And I expanded my sourcing a little more. I started looking more on let goes, Facebook marketplaces, auction ninja. I did I did a lot of auction ninja. I went more to the auctions on we Monday. A, we have an auction in uh uh in, in our local town that, that you like that Vinny likes to go to and he, he always buys all types of crazy stuff. Yeah, so I, I I expanded my sources and I wasn't afraid to spend that like for example, I remember six months back i went into savers and they had hundred dollar doll hundred dollar doll like they had they had three dollars for a hundred dollars each normally i would have said i'm not spending three hundred dollars and taking the chance each doll was going for almost three hundred so normally i would have said ah oh, i don't have that much money i don't want to spend that much but i did it you know it's it's stuff like that i'm spending more to to, to make and, a higher I used to, profit you remember i used to have these conversations with you like two three years ago but you didn't get it because and that's normal because when you're brand new and you're not making a lot of money you're holding on to your money so tight and yeah you, for you it's not like not for you but just in general i felt the same way it doesn't make sense to like spend a hundred to make 200 you'd rather spend like three dollars and make like 20. yeah exactly but as you start to grow your business and i know behind the scenes we've been talking you've been saving a lot of money you've been managing your finances really well once you get to that point where you have like five or ten thousand dollars saved up you make so many better decisions, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're not coming from a place of like, you're not super, super needy and you're not like hand to mouth. You've got this this money that's sitting there and you feel like secure in a sense and you know like, you could be smarter with the way you invest. Yeah, and it's all about the effort you put into it too. Like to get to where I am right now, I put a lot of time and work into it. It wasn't just like one, two, three, I'm making this much money. Like I, I put hours and hours into this thing, like listing, researching, buying, searching everywhere for them like it, it it does take time but once you get momentum going you realize yeah. that the momentum works on your side so how long have you been selling toys for in total now over three years yeah it's gonna be four years soon if you could go back what are you 32 now yeah if you could go back to yourself with the knowledge you have now at 28 so like there's two vinnies there's 32 year old vinny and 28 year old vinny you have the knowledge now what would you say to 28 year old vinny about starting a toy business and maybe things that he could have done differently or 
maybe just general advice you would have given yourself if you had had the knowledge? I know that was kind of confusing. I would have told myself to do more research, take more chances, mm. because there's a lot of stuff I was yeah. skeptical about. Yeah. I would have told myself to take more chances, and I would have told myself to list as much as possible. Yeah. Listing's not sexy. It's not fun for the most part, and a lot of times we, you know, we'd rather be out there sourcing and going on those treasure hunts, and it's just so much easier to be listening to the radio and driving around and going from thrift store to thrift store. It's exciting. It's yeah, like, the it's treasure hunt's the funnest part. I mean, that's that's what you all, we're all in. That's the... <laughs> The dragon that we're chasing there yeah. is like finding that item, you know, but there's there's legwork that goes after that. And you have to remember that like you have to you have to realize your profits. And the one thing that I did is I kind of became a quarter slash collector. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm trying to break away from that because I yeah. saved a lot of stuff thinking like, hey, if history repeats itself, maybe these toys will double in value. Maybe all this money I spent will be double if I wait 10 years. But then I'm thinking to myself. Who knows what's going to happen in 10 years? I'm not going to be I around. I used to so shake I, my head, but I, I respected it because I'm not a collector, but I know there's a lot of people who collect. But I'm glad I did it because this tragic coronavirus happened yeah. and stores closed down. And I was able to keep my eBay business going because I had a stockpile <laughs> of stuff that I put aside. Because I spent so much and bought so many it toys. It happened for a reason, man. I was able to survive with the reselling until until now I've, I've run through a lot of stuff in Man, the past couple on months. my channel I've, we've always like you know had a we've always talked poorly about like even about myself like i would beat myself up for having a death pile and we'd like always make jokes in the community about like don't have a death pile but when this all happened everyone had a death pile made out like a bandit oh yeah Those prices went up you couldn't find anything right i mean unless you went to like did like retail or online arbitrage i look at it this way um when you go out and thrift and you buy things that are valuable and you know they're valuable, you have an asset. It's like owning a value that most likely doesn't depreciate. Especially with toys because yeah. they're harder and harder. They're nostalgic. So you, you always have an asset on your side. I mean, if you do have a death pile, but it's good stuff that you know has value, if it's electronics or things that become obsolete, yeah, if it's trendy. it doesn't make any sense to hold on to that yeah. stuff, you know? Unless but it's if like you have and sealed, maybe yeah, possibly, exactly. Possibly you have something. But with toys, it's almost like yeah, just sitting there. It's it's going to be making me money just sitting there, or if it's on my eBay. But it, it all it's all up to what your plan is. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to just make some extra cash to yeah. afford your car payment and hang out with people and enjoy yourself? Are you trying to build a business? Yeah. You know, you're you have to decide first and foremost before you get into any reselling thing, like what you are trying to do. What's your goal? What's your The purpose? goal is the number one point. Because what works for then you isn't going to work for me, vice your, versa. Your actions have to coincide with that goal. Mm. If you're going to say, I want to make enough money to collect, to save up, to resell toys for triple the amount in yeah. 10 years, then, you know, go do that. If you want to make money now as much as you can, don't be saving toys. Just sell them all right now. You know, it's, it's all about your end game. Like, yeah. what are you trying to get to? If you want to travel the world and make passive income, then you're probably not going to want to sell on eBay. You might want to look at Amazon because you could do all the upfront work, ship everything in, or you could look into drop shipping. Yeah. There's different... There's and the toy category is, is still untapped. Like, you see yeah. a lot of com competition with books. You see a lot of competition with clothing. I do see competition with toys, but it's... Not as much as I see with anything else. Yeah, when you go to the book section, you always see someone scanning. Not always, but for the most part, clothing. But for it's, some reason, toys. It's a specialized knowledge because anybody can take out... I hope nobody takes offense to this, but anybody can take out their phone and scan yeah, a barcode and see a price. You know, But it takes a little specialized knowledge to know exactly what toy you're looking at, what the value could yeah. be, how to look it up. And it seems like when people start reselling, they start looking at like... They start looking at the clothing. They start looking at the shoes. But you don't really hear people talking about like starting with like the toys. I think it's just so overwhelming. Exactly, and that's the reason I decided to make these guides with you because like I wish I had something like this when I started because then a lot of those headaches would have been out of my way. A lot of these things, I'm sitting there for like 20 minutes, like what is this toy? It looks interesting. I know this could be something cool. Like, what is it? I'm sitting there for 20 minutes trying to figure out what it is. Well, share with everyone what you mean by these guides because I'm sure there's some first-time viewers watching. Oh, um, me and Steve collaborated on a couple uh, toy guides to... Um, it basically shares my experience, toys to look for, um, price points, jackpot margins, items, jackpot avoid, items, models, price points. And I put together a list of toys that 
you should always be on the lookout there's for. There's three guides right now. Toy there's three guides. Profits. In total, you're going to have in total, you're going to have over 100 different toys. More than that. Yeah, we it have, should be even yeah, more. We just released the third guide, I think, six months ago or so. Uh, it's somewhere around there, but it's... It's over 100, toys, yeah. yeah. And uh, these are toys that you can actually go out and find. You know, there's some guides, like I, I invested in a video game guide a couple years ago. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the person, but he put a video, guide, a video game guide out. They're all like $500 to $1,000 games. I'm like, where the heck am I going to find these things? You're never going to find these things. Like, yeah, there's certain like it's like oh go look for a freaking 1952 tops Mickey Mantle card that's worth 40 grand like how are you gonna find that <laughs> you know and that's the thing we did about these guys we we put toys in there that are ac accessible to everybody you're gonna find them at tag sales thrift stores um, online marketplaces anything like that you know with that being said sorry to cut you guys off but it's I, I know right. it's gonna cut off if you enjoyed this video like comment subscribe Vinny congrats man crushing it next video he's gonna be doing 10k a month hopefully oh yeah putting the pressure idea all right we'll talk to you peace, peace.